so I work in the box office, and early on, I had a key that I had to return to this lockbox in the back stage area of the building. It's like on the other side of the building. And David Copperfield was in one of our theaters. And I went through the backstage area and I returned my key and I was going to walk back and I can hear like the speakers playing what's going on in the theater. And I hear David Copperfield's voice talking like, cool, he's doing his thing. And I'm walking past his craft services table and there's like some food and a big tub with sodas in it. Oh, I could really go for a Pepsi. I think I'm going to take one of David Copperfield's Pepsis. And as I reached for it, no. he walked out of a door no. right next to me with a giant bodyguard behind him and gave me the dirtiest look. Oh. And I just looked at him and then just kept walking. Did you take the Pepsi? No. Okay. I did not. Is he, he was a magician? There the whole time. Is that who he? Yes. Okay. And the next day in Jess's office, there was an empty Pepsi can <laughs> with a knife <laughs> sticking <laughs> through it. <laughs> yep. Welcome to Beer and Board Games, folks, where I'm joined by this liar and this liar and this liar, and we're going to appropriately enough play the game Liar Liar. <laughs> Liar Liar is a game of lying and guessing who's lying. And now I guess I'll have a beer. Well, there's nothing like lying when you're on a family vacation. Mm. Delicious cream ale from the Roadhouse something company. And uh, this is from Mel. Thank you, Mel. I don't think it really tastes like much. No. But it's got a texture, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I guess it does, yeah. yeah. Tonight's episode is sponsored by the makers of Liar Liar, and we're not lying when we say we appreciate it. Thanks, guys. In the game Liar Liar, each round we are given a roll card, and that card tells us either to tell the truth or to tell a lie. Then we get one of these topic cards, and each person tells a personal story or memory mm -hmm. about that topic, and one of those is a lie. And then we vote to see who we think is lying. If you are telling the truth and someone guesses you to be a liar, you get points. And if you are telling a lie and no one guesses you as the liar, you get big points. Okay. Don't get mad at me. I'm taking my hair down. Yeah, just whip him. Just don't whip it in my face. Whip him. You're already getting too close to me. With whip it. Why whip are you it. taking it down? Because I. It looked perfectly fine when it was up. And now we have continuity issues. Whip him. I can change my appearance. Goddamn millennial. Keep it in. Yeah. Or fix it in post and put, <laughs> make it so my hair is up in a bun the whole time. It's in post. <laughs> what I have here, I have four cards. These roll cards. There is one lie card in here. I have shuffled it up so no one knows who's what. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to deal these out to each person. Keep your roll cards secret. Shh. Our topic is countries. Travel, food, people. Okay, I, I have a... I have a, a, a okay, this is good. Mm -hmm. When I was in college, there was this exchange student. I guess she wasn't an exchange student. She was just in college. Her name was Oksana. And she was so beautiful, and I was so in love with her, but I, could, I didn't have the courage to tell her. And we were just kind of friends, but it was, and it was tense. And I, I finally I asked her out, Aww. and she just said, no, no. <laughs> and she just seemed so sad and disappointed yeah. in me. Oh, it was rough. I went to London for a theater studies course. One of the people on the trip was the brother of this guy that I had dated before. I slept with his brother during this trip. And it was great revenge. In my early 20s, I took a relatively unplanned flight to England to surprise a girl on her birthday. I surprised her at a bar where I got to meet her and her boyfriend, whose name was Dudley, and was the fifth ranked fencer in England. And it was a very awkward several hours in the bar. And then I left home, I was gone out of the country for under 72 hours. When I was in Italy, when you arrive at the little city, uh, Cinque Terre, you had to walk up a hundred steps. We dropped off all of our bags at the hostel. So we went to this gelato place. It was open, but there was nobody in the gelato shop. We searched around the village and found the guy who owned the gelato shop sure. in one of the other shops talking to someone. Okay, so decide who you think is lying. I think Aaron is lying. I think Stacy is lying. We got two for Stacy, two for Aaron. I know you're telling the truth because I've heard this story. I have <laughs> too. I knew that story. Well, I'm afraid that I, I was the liar. Oh, I felt oh it was a lie at the beginning with the laugh. 
and then you turn me around on it, so nicely done. Oh, wow. Yeah. Since oh. no one guessed my lie, I get three points. I get two points, right? Because I have two liar cards in front of me. That's yes. correct. The both of you get two. I was telling the truth. Books. Authors. Favorite books. Reading experiences. My uh, great aunt, Isabel, was a published poet. I went to a book signing for Neil Gaiman, and I laughed at my friend's joke right before we got to the table, and I think he thought I was laughing at him, and he signed my book to Jess, you dick, Neil Gaiman. There was a book talk, and I got to introduce Roger Ebert. Is he the one that's dead? Yes, okay. he's, he's the dead author. <laughs> my favorite book is Hitchhiker, Piker... Oh, hello? Oh, Jesus, help, help. <laughs> My favorite book is Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Uh, uh, who's the liar? It's me! Hey. I knew it! The people who guessed that Jess was the liar correctly, they get three points. Okay, our topic is slang, words, meaning, culture. Do you guys know what the Bader-Meinhof phenomenon is? Sort of. It sounds Refresh really familiar, you. yeah. You encounter something for the first time and then immediately you see it everywhere. Yeah. Oh, manifesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the first time I ever heard the term yada, yada, yada was on Seinfeld. <laughs> and I'd never heard it before. And suddenly everyone was saying it. It could have been just because they watched that show. Mm -hmm. But I was seeing it in like books and, and, you know, stuff like that. I went to a Green Bay Packer game with Paul Guzzi. And I coined a term called the Lambo Dick Labyrinth, which is when you go to a Packer game in winter and you have like six layers of clothes on, and you have when you're at the urinal, you have to get your junk out to pee easily. And I submitted it to UrbanDictionary.com and got it published on UrbanDictionary.com. And Paul Guzzi read it and he went, Erp! <laughs> Lock and load! I don't know enough about <laughs> the Green Bay Packers to know who that person is. Um, <laughs> Paul Guzzi yeah, no, was mean, a quarterback yeah. for the Green Bay Packers. Didn't know from the, he, but he was just a backup quarterback. He's second string. Yeah. Second back. He rarely saw the field. Was he in the in the audience with you? In the, what is it called? The audience. The crowd. The Packer audience. <laughs> My current favorite slang term is the word bussy. It stands for boy pussy, so like someone's anus. But I like to use it for everything. The word uh, borborygmy means the sound your stomach makes. Okay. Wow. Oh, Jess was the light. Come Damn. on. You just came up with that? It's partially true, so it's inspired by a thing, but Urban Dictionary did not accept it. You eh, suck. I don't know about that, That's Jeff. no Iffy. points. Most of that story was true, but then you just changed one little bit. That's what second graders do. I'm going to give it to him because he's got zero points. All right. We are having a fun time playing Liar Liar the Game. I am lying to my friends and I'm loving it. <laughs> you can get your own copy of this game by going to liarliargame.com. Lie to your own friends. And don't get caught in the Lambo dick labyrinth. <laughs> I do you, do you, do you. The score as it stands, Matt and Aaron are tied in the lead with nine points. Woo -woo. Yeah. yeah. Stacy has seven points. Jess has four points. Oh, Jess. Ooh. The topic. Ideas! Oh my god. <laughs> Inventions, business, fun! Business! For a few years of my life, I wanted my nickname to be Aaron Boat Idea Yanda. <laughs> One of those years was this year, <laughs> and the other year was last year. <laughs> when I was a kid, I told my family and my friends that I wanted my nickname to be Hoot because I really liked owls and I was funny was and am funny. And then my sisters found out and they ridiculed me mercilessly and it's been over like I think two decades now and I still get owl themed gifts for every <laughs> occasion. Yep. You screwed yourself. I screwed the hoot. You should make your Twitter bio was and am funny. I should get back on Twitter. Where are you, Instagram? <laughs> your bio on Instagram for it. <laughs> also, when I was a kid, I had three AIM accounts. I had Met for Broadway 20, Softball QT1, and then when I got older, I was like, I'm gonna be funny. And then I did Sergeant Nut Gobbler. <laughs> Goblin? Gobbla. Gobbla? Gobbla. G-O-B-B-L-A. Gobbla. My dad viewing it, just shaking his head slowly. <laughs> They knew they couldn't control me. Like, no, because you were Sergeant Nut Goblin. Yeah. And they knew, like, there's no way they're gonna control a sergeant who gobbles nuts. <laughs> or whatever I mean, you did. Like, maybe Private Nut Goblin you could control, but a sergeant. No, no, forget no. it. Back in the day, Mike had just bought Comedy Sports. 
and he offered me to be partners with him mm. to like to like co-own the business. He really he really wanted this to happen, but I couldn't do it because I didn't have any money. I had an idea with my wife that we were going to open a restaurant called Havesies, with the idea being that every dish you could order would come in a half size. So if you couldn't decide between two things, you could get like I'm going to get the mac and cheese and some steak. And then we decided it would be cost prohibitive because of all of the specialty dishes we would have to purchase. Liar. Liar. The liar. Oh no! No one would ever go into business with me, except never, this fool. I didn't know I was going into business with him. The gap has narrowed. Matt has pulled into the lead with 12 points. Aaron is right behind with 10 points. Uh, and Justin and Stacey are tied at seven. Yeah, yeah. How about that? Suck a nut. Boat ideas. Give me some of this. <laughs> I just heard a little rustle and a giggle. Hey, everybody! Hi! How are you, Cookie? I finally got that vaccine! What? You, I, you told us months ago that you got the vaccine. Several times. <gasps> those, those were fibs. <laughs> yeah, I was a liar. Big time fibber. I was too ashamed to admit that I was a vaccine skeptic. I decided I wasn't going to do that vaccine till I did the research. <laughs> there was a smart man online said, do the research. So I did. I found out all kinds of shit. Mm. Yeah, like what? Like that microchip. Oh. Bill Gates uses that microchip so he can look at you when you're sitting on the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> he looks at what you do through the microchip and he writes it all down in a big book. It's true. That's why Melinda left him. Because like, of his toilet proclivities. I don't think a microchip can do that. You don't know what Bill Gates is capable of. He invented Apple. Yep. <laughs> that wasn't Bill Gates. That was Steve Jobs. Who cares? They're both dead. Bill Gates isn't it's dead. No. Yeah, he is. He died five years ago. Did he? Oh. It's a, it's a secret. He, they replaced him with an iPhone. I read about that on a website called Fochan. Uh, well, which vaccine did you get, Cookie? Did you get uh, Pfizer or Moderna? Nope. Well, well uh, there's a third one. Uh, Johnson and Johnson. Johnson. Right, Johnson. Exactly. Nope. Oh. Um. AstraZeneca. Um. I said, give me the vaccine that no one else can get, and my friends on the dark web were happy to oblige. <laughs> Got me that AstraZeneca. Oh. Shot it in my veins. That's Felt so good. Shouldn't go there. I went there. Nope. Should be intramuscular. Wrong. Path. Shot it in the veins. Shot it. Mainline. No, ma'am. Oh, Too busy okay. searching for my mainline. <laughs> you know I couldn't hit it sideways. I've been getting into music lately. I didn't know you were out of the game. I always thought you were in the game. You're always in the game. <laughs> Are you just getting into music? Yeah, I just started listening to, to music. <laughs> I never heard it before. <laughs> Man, there's, there's so much for you to there's discover. There's so much music! Yeah, I think that injection might have done something to you. <laughs> yeah, it made me Little curious. <laughs> well, anyway, how are you all doing? Oh, we're Very doing good. great. All we're right. having yeah. fun. We're playing a game. Um, Cookie, guess what? What? I got you a gift. <laughs> I thought you was going to say chicken butt. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. Uh, what do you got? Classic. Well, I heard your story that you told last time you were on about turtles. Yeah. We were out shopping and we found uh, this Aww. thing. It's called the Pet Turtle Set. Turtle. Oh. <laughs> it's from our generation. This is our story. I don't know what the hell that means, but... I don't know what any of it is. It's a turtle. It's a little turtle. Little turtle. Okay, let's open it up for you. Oh. Looks like a turtle to me. We ought to get a real turtle to come in here and knock boots with it. Because you know they would. And they what? would get up all on the back. Yeah. Start going, yee. <laughs> well, this is real cute. I'm going to take this toy to home, sleep with it in the bed. Mm. <laughs> if you need me to euthanize it, I got you. <gasps> Goodbye. <laughs> okay, well, bye, Cookie. I'm, I'm sorry <laughs> that our guests don't know how to behave. <laughs> Mark Falona is a bad ass. And he likes motorcycles. Oh, 
Also, he likes jets. Also, sometimes he'll rev that bad ass engine. Also, unfortunately, <laughs> the landlord hunted him down. <laughs> Falona? Uh uh. No <laughs> way! Evicted! <laughs> <laughs> phone, apps, broken pictures. I have an app on my phone that is to uh, suss out humanely sourced meat if I do decide to eat meat. What's it called? Is it humane? Wow. I did not get a cell phone until 2004. And even to this day, I still have a very pre cell phone mentality when it comes to phone calls and using the telephone and I oftentimes will th find myself thinking when I get home I have to remember to text that person <laughs> rather than just doing it. Was your first cell phone a Nokia? No, it was a flip phone. Very good. And it had an antenna that you would oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, flip and nice. pull it up and then you'd do the call. My iPhone is so old. <laughs> Come on. How, How old, old is, is it? it? Some of the apps won't even update anymore. Oh. After my wife and I separated, a friend of mine convinced me to try a dating app, so I tried Bumble. Within the first 20 people I matched with my ex-wife. I did lie. Yes! Yes! Stacy still has seven points. Jess has pulled ahead with eight. Fuck. Aaron has 14 points, and Matt wins with 15 points! 15 points! What? Folks, we had a good time tonight. We learned what it's like to tell the truth and occasionally tell a lie, fabricate some information to fool our friends for fun and for victory. Sometimes it feels pretty good to lie when you get something good out of it. And sometimes it feels good to tell the truth and then upsetting when people think you're lying. And sometimes it feels good to have a healthy orgasm. Good night. Ding, ding. <laughs>